Counter-Strike 2. It's a thing. It's gonna happen. And it's gonna be the biggest release in all of gaming once it comes out. And maybe it might be the biggest flop if they do it wrong. And, well, that's because it's replacing CSGO, which might be a bad thing, but who knows. Hopefully for the sake of video game preservation, though, we can still play CSGO without the new updates of CS2. In light of this, I thought it would be fun to play the Counter-Strike games in preparation for CS2, but then I remembered I'm all about Counter-Strike and can't play online games well. But then I remembered that there is a Counter-Strike game almost nobody talks about. A Counter-Strike game that is kind of disliked by the community. You ask anyone what their favorite Counter-Strike game is, you'll probably get a lot of CS 1.6, then CSGO, and then probably Source next, and then maybe sprinkle in the Xbox port in there somewhere. But barely anyone ever mentions Condition Zero, and when you bring it up, they stick their nose up in the air and go, oh yeah, that one. But why is that? What made Condition Zero so disliked by the community? Isn't what made Counter-Strike so good that Counter-Strike has been pretty much the same since 1.6 with only minor changes? And yes, that is the case. So what did Condition Zero do that was so controversial? Well, simple. It included a campaign mode. But not just one campaign mode, two campaign modes. You see, Condition Zero has three games with it when you buy it on Steam. Counter-Strike 1.6, Counter-Strike Condition Zero, and Counter-Strike... Condition Zero Deleted Scenes. Condition Zero Deleted Scenes is very different from what you'd expect Counter-Strike to actually be. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first talk about what Condition Zero is like. Condition Zero has a campaign style mode called Tour of Duty, which is kind of like Battlefront 1's campaign. There are four difficulties with six tours of duty, with three missions each. Each mission has a series of challenges you need to complete along with winning the game. First of three, then an advantage win of two. In total, there are about 72 missions that you can play with each difficulty having different challenges. You still play on the same maps with the same objectives, but you do have the addition of the extra challenges plus much harder bots. Bots are used in an interesting way here too. You are in charge of a counter-terrorist team, kind of like Rainbow Six, where you select a squad of CT operatives from five different tiers, called costs, because you use something called reputation points, basically XP from beating a mission, to recruit CT operatives to your squad. Each cost reflects how many points you need, so cost 1 you only need 1, cost 5 you need 5. The higher the cost, the better the bot. Each bot also has its own unique stats, skill, co-op, and bravery, plus a specific weapon. Skill is basically how fast they react, so the better the rank, the faster they react. Co-op is how well they follow your radio commands, and I'm not really sure what bravery is. It's supposed to make them more aggressive, but I'm not really sure how that factors into the skill stats, so... Maybe it means they're more likely to attack enemies or something? I don't really know. Anyway, basically all you have to do is select the bots with the best stats and then just play a Counter-Strike mission against enemy bots trying to complete the required challenges. This can actually make for a bit of an intense game where you might actually want to lose a round or two if you're struggling with a specific objective, such as the time-sensitive challenges. Now, I'm not Counter-Strike's biggest fan, but I honestly really like this system as it makes for a much more intense system than just trying to outplay the other team. While I have no doubt CS veterans can breeze through expert missions probably without a single squad mate, I can't deny this is a really fun mode to a casual player. That said though, there's not just a whole lot to talk about here. The only difference in difficulties is that maps are just harder now, with bots and different challenges. All the maps are just the 1.6 maps, none of the Condition Zero exclusive maps, so that also kind of sucks. But, as a first attempt at a campaign mode for Counter-Strike, I guess it's okay. I can find myself going back to this mode and trying to best it. Originally, I actually wanted to beat everything for the video, but then I realized what that meant. And I just kind of was like, ah, nah. I, I just have a lot more to say than just the Tour of Duty mode, so I just didn't bother. Sorry. Now, the deleted scenes... <laughs> that's a... That's something else entirely. See, Condition Zero kind of went through development hell, and as a result, it wasn't the most polished game at launch. Originally, they wanted to make Counter-Strike kind of like SOCOM or Rainbow Six or Half-Life with a full-length campaign alongside the multiplayer. Deleted scenes are the campaign missions, which were cut from Condition Zero, compiled into its own game. These have 
literally nothing to do with how Counter-Strike is played. Each map is just completely unique. It, it's just Half-Life, but with Counter-Strike weapons, basically. As a result of this, it gives an oddly unique campaign experience to the franchise. Doesn't mean it's good, though. I mean, it's fine for the most part. It's just not very good. I thought going into it, it was going to be a little like Rainbow Six or maybe SOCOM, just a bit more fast-paced. Instead, it's just kind of a linear shooter with Counter-Strike weapons and aiming mechanics. Most missions, you don't even have squad mates. You're just on your own. Or if you do have teammates, they just die really fast. Or they aren't even useful in combat at all. Also doesn't help that it has some really bad levels, such as this level where you have to investigate an area to see if the bad guys have nukes. Rainbow Six has this issue too, where it just has these forced stealth missions, and honestly, the ones in Counter-Strike are just awful. Who thought these were fun? Forced stealth levels in games where you primarily shoot people are just the worst things ever created, even if they're only for a little bit. I'm not playing Splinter Cell, these should be optional. There are a few exceptions, only one I can think of off the top of my head is All Gilly Up from COD 4, and even then, a lot of that is just optional. But okay, fine. Maybe there's just a couple, maybe they only put a few in- Nope. No, there are five levels where you have to use stealth or else it's just an instant mission failure. Two is stretching it. If it was just the second level of the campaign with a really minor s moment, I wouldn't have mentioned it, but having five missions like this? I don't know what they were thinking. Who 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 plays Counter-Strike and thinks, yes, stealth? The real issue is, is the maps are just too linear. You can't use stealth. You just have to memorize enemy patterns and then walk when they're not looking or avoid a security camera. It's just, they don't work in linear shooters. Stop putting forced stealth sections in linear shooters. Anyway, there are some really fun levels here, like Secret War, where you play as Spensnaz and you have to shut down a nuke silo that's being attacked by two different terrorist groups, one who wants to launch the nuke and the other one who just wants to take it. This is the most unique level in the game because it's the only one where terrorists are fighting each other, as well as the counter-terrorists, making it a three-way shootout. It's just really unique to me. I love when there's multiple factions fighting each other. Fast line is a pretty cool level, but the boss fight kind of bugged out on me the first few times I tried it. But basically, you just have to stop a terrorist group from destroying a Japanese subway. It's actually kind of horrific as you'll run across dead bodies and hear people begging for their lives before being executed. It's, it's actually kind of dark. Recoil is a really good level. This is a great way to open the game. It basically took inspiration from Black Hawk Down, both the movie and the fantastic Delta Force game, and I'm just a sucker for this specific moment in history. And the Delta Force game is amazing. I know it's not Mogadishu, but the feel of the level is the same, so I just can't hate this one. It's just really good. Run is also really unique, with you having to jump from rooftop to rooftop in Japan after killing a mob boss and invading bad guys. It's not the best level, but it's pretty fun. Now, I said this is a campaign, and technically it is, but the story is non-existent. You don't control any specific character, and there's no continuity between levels. Each level is self-contained and gives you an excuse to fight various terrorists in various locations. It's basic, but it works fine enough. But I don't really like that you have to play the main missions in a specific order, because that means without using cheats, you have to play the stealth levels. And like I said, the overall gameplay is just lacking in so many areas. Instead of working with a squad of counter-terrorists, you're just on your own. Considering the bots in the main game can follow basic commands, it's just a huge missed opportunity to not even include it a little bit. At best, you can just press the use key to tell certain NPCs to follow or hold. Oh, and another thing that holds this game back is the overabundance of levels with enemies using a one-shot kill RPG. The overall time to kill in the campaign is also really long. This makes sense for you because you're on your own pretty much the whole time, so it's not really fair to have the low health you have in the multiplayer, but enemies can also tank several shots, like shotgun blasts to the face. There are also some new items and weapons you can use, but not a crazy amount. And there's also a few boss fights, like a helicopter. I wouldn't say this is a bad game, even with the stealth levels. You can beat them if you have the patience and take the time to learn them. The action-packed levels are generally pretty fun too, and the cutscenes and animations look good for the most part. But I do think they missed a great opportunity to make a more faster-paced version of Rainbow Six. 
such as having to use your squad comprised of various CTs to rescue hostages and defuse bombs. At the very least, they could have just had like a connected story mo mode where you just played as like a specific unit, like the Navy SEALs. Every mission that you played as the SEALs in was connected to one another. I really do think there is a lot of potential for a Counter-Strike story mode. Especially for the time when it had to compete against Rainbow Six and SWAT. Just make it a bit more open, have a squad helping you out, maybe more of an emphasis on how the multiplayer is played, but with a bit more of a linear design, and I think you could have a really great game here. The last thing I want to comment on is the overall multiplayer mode. Try as I might, I just cannot fault how much fun this game is to play. The fast-paced, easy-to-learn, but hard-to-master gameplay is in full force here, and it's just so addictive. It's been a while since I've played the other Counter-Strike games, but it does seem like this one has a little bit of a different control from the others. Weapons sometimes don't even hit when you're not moving and crouched, and at times the floaty controls kind of glitch out, but that could just be due to how old the game is, and just some of the quality of life improvements present in Source really show the kinks in this game. Also, for whatever reason, sometimes the game lagged on me, which I guess made sense when I had a ton of bots, but when I had 11, it made little sense. But even that never made me want to stop. As I was recording my multiplayer footage, I found myself saying, just one more round, just one more game, and ended up playing well into the night, which sucked for me because I had finals the next day, but that just goes to show how fun the game is. Everything from the map design, the weapons, the sound effects, the voice acting, the game modes, it's just all fantastic. With the inclusion of its exclusive maps and tons of mods you can install, no Steam Workshop support for some reason, plus all of 1.6 maps, there really is something for everyone. And even early in my footage, I accidentally forgot to set a round limit, and I never really got bored playing the same map over and over, finding faster flanking routes and shortcuts to get to my enemies first. After a semi-D playthrough of the game, I can see why it's the lowest rated CS game. I can also see why it's not very well liked coming back to. It's far from terrible, and some of the ideas it had were really good, but with a buggy and disappointing campaign mode, which was heavily pushed, and very subtle but negative game-changing differences to the core multiplayer, combined with it having been in development hell and releasing in March of 2004, there really wasn't a chance for this game. 2004 was the year Half-Life 2, Halo 2, Killzone, Men of Valor, Star Wars Battlefront, Doom 3, Far Cry Jack 3, Super Mario 64 DS, Metroid Prime 2, World of Warcraft, and countless other games came out that year. Plus, Counter-Strike Source coming out that same year probably didn't help. Wait, what? So yeah, Condition Zero was supposed to be released between 2001 and 2003, but the push for the campaign mode held the game back a ton, not to mention it was passed between several different studios. The game ran on the Gold Source engine, which is a good engine, but it was kind of outdated for the time. Because of this, once the game was finally ready for release, they just kind of said screw it and put it on store shelves, then released Counter-Strike Source a few months later in October, which, unsurprisingly, ran off the Source engine, which is just a much better engine. Condition Zero was doomed to fail, there really wasn't a ton of hope. The few interesting things it had weren't enough to make it preferable to Source, and the many changes it had were noticeably worse than 1.6. I don't hate this game. As a casual fan of Counter-Strike, I can see why the fandom doesn't hold this game in high regard, and I see why it's not as fondly looked back on. Some of the things I like, like the Tour of Duty mode, are a nice bonus, but are in no way an essential part of the game. I still found myself just playing the basic multiplayer against bots instead of touching that mode. If you're interested in this game, it's like 10 bucks on Steam or 8 bucks on eBay if you want a physical copy, and regardless of which edition you get, it's completely worth it. On Steam, you get both Condition Zero and Deleted Scenes and 1.6, and with the disc copy, it just makes installing it on older computers really easy, so you can just host a LAN party if you wanted. In conclusion, I think the 6 out of 10 ratings it got is the most accurate rating for this game. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. This was a lot of fun to make, and it would mean a lot if you would leave a comment and like to help boost the video in the algorithm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.